The pandemic woke up the world and people recognized the threat the Chinese Communist regime poses to public health, supply chains, the environment and human rights. The war in Ukraine alerted people to the security risks in the Pacific and particularly in the Taiwan Strait. Governments in the democratic world are taking measures to decouple from China. Western companies are leaving China amid the draconian COVID lockdowns and energy shortages, or we think they are leaving. Surprisingly, Beijing announced that foreign direct investment in China hit a record high in 2022, and democratic nations lead the pack. Even Taiwan sent a record amount of investment to China. How are we supposed to interpret this trend? Hi everyone, welcome to my show, I'm Lei. According to China's Commerce Department, foreign direct investment into China climbed 20% year over year, reaching 138 billion US dollars in the first eight months of the year. Most of the increase is in high-tech industries, which saw an uptick of 34.6% in foreign investment. Foreign investment in the service sector climbed 8.7%. South Korea, Germany, Japan, and the United Kingdom are the top origination countries that contributed to the growth. And the respective increase is South Korea 59%, Germany 30%, Japan 27%, and the United Kingdom 17%. We know we can't always trust official Chinese data, so I started to look into these numbers. I found that 80% of European investments were made by just 10 large European companies. The Rhodium Group said autos, food processing, farmer biotech, chemicals, and consumer products make up nearly 70% of all European FDI, and Germany stands out as the top investor, making up 43% of the total. In a media interview, the former CEO of Volkswagen, Herbert Dies, said that without business with China, Germany's inflation would worsen and economic growth and employment would be affected. German Marshall Foundation, a think tank, mentioned that many German executives like these support closer ties with China. In particular, companies with large investments in China are scrambling to bring the public debate back in their favor. Germany, in fact, has become more dependent on China in 2022, with direct investment and trade deficit reaching new heights. A study by the German Economic Institute found that, despite ongoing political pressure on Berlin to pivot away from Beijing, German investment in China amounted to 10 billion euros during the first half of 2022, far exceeding the previous peak of 6.2 billion euros, recorded since the turn of the millennium. Ola Kalanias, the chairman of Daimler, the company that owns Mercedes-Benz, said in a recent interview with the German newspaper Die Welt that the German economy without the Chinese market is an illusion. He believes the growth potential of China will remain highly attractive in the next decade. In response to a question about how Mercedes-Benz is responding to the risk of a possible conflict in the Taiwan Strait, he said, The idea that the European or U.S. economies can be decoupled from the Chinese economy is a total fantasy. The consequences and impact on the global economy will be enormous and isn't at the same level when compared to the impact of the war in Ukraine. For large multinational companies that have already invested heavily in China, it's difficult for them to psychologically part with China. A 2021-22 sentiment survey on 288 British companies in China by the British Chamber of Commerce shows that even though 64% of the companies said that doing business in China is more difficult now, 46% of them want to increase investment in 2022. Last October, and three years after announcing plans to strengthen its R&D capacity in China, Daimler unveiled its new tech center in Beijing. With 1,000 engineers, the new tech center is the first outside Germany that can test everything, putting it more on par technically with its German R&D headquarters near Stuttgart. Just last week, on September 23rd, Daimler began producing Mercedes-Benz branded trucks in China, at its joint plant with China's Fulton Motor in Beijing. On June 28th, 
The German automaker Audi broke the ground with its new EV plant in Changchun. Audi invested $2.7 US billion in the project. And on June 23rd, BMW's new EV factory in Shenyang officially opened. It's by far the largest single investment by BMW in Chinese market at 2.2 billion US dollars. Germany isn't alone. Most interestingly, amid growing geopolitical tension in the Taiwan Strait, Taiwan saw a resurgence of investment in China, with a record 3.5 billion US dollars worth of new investments by listed companies in Taiwan during the first half of the year. If we annualize the number, the total 2022 investment by Taiwanese public companies in China will be the highest since 2014, and they are concentrated in computer and peripheral equipment and electronics industries, according to the island's Financial Supervisory Commission. Wu Qianchen, an associate professor at Taipei Ocean University of Science and Technology, suggested that to buy low during a crisis is a common mentality that Taiwanese businessmen have towards investing in China. He said that after the Tiananmen Square massacre in 1989, many Taiwanese businessmen took advantage of the investment deals in China when foreign capitals left. However, Taiwan's Financial Supervisory Commission showed that the profitability of mainland Chinese investment should be a concern to Taiwanese investors. Profits by Taiwanese public companies in China were down 16% year over year during the first half of this year, while profits of investment in overseas markets reached a record high during the same period. The profitability concern is also substantiated by data from China's National Bureau of Statistics, which has confirmed that foreign investments in China saw the worst decline in profitability when compared with domestic and state-owned companies. From January to July 2022, China's total profit by large enterprises was 4.9 trillion renminbi, down 1.1% year over year, of which total profit of foreign invested companies was down 14.5%, profits of private enterprises was down 7.1%, while profits of state-owned companies saw an 8% increase. I think these are the intended results based on Xi Jinping's new economic blueprint, which puts state-owned enterprises as the top economic priority. The foreign companies' native countries and governments may not support their continued investment in China. For decades, German companies' business in China have been backed by government guarantees. German economic minister and vice chancellor Robert Habeck said after the G7 meeting in mid-September, the time of naivety toward China is over. Back in May, he denied the Volkswagen Group any guarantees on China investments. In the near future, if German companies want to invest, if they trade with China, they are likely to do so at their own risk and will no longer be able to rely on government guarantees and safeguards. One China expert of the German Council on Foreign Relations said in an interview. I think these large companies are taking a big gamble in the Chinese market. I was told by a Chinese scholar that of the 1.3 billion Chinese, only 100 million are affluent, and they are the target consumers for these foreign national companies. The other 1.2 billion Chinese don't have the means to consume those products. 100 million is one third of the US population and about a quarter of EU's population. He said that's the real Chinese market they're interested in, not the 1.2 billion Chinese. But if a large percentage of these 100 million wealthy Chinese or relatively wealthy Chinese are trying to leave China, and if they don't even believe in the Chinese market, I don't see how companies like Mercedes-Benz and Volkswagen can make money there. The thought of money and profits can be blinding. Here's the video on China's new economic blueprint. That's all for today. Thank you. See you next time.